Welcome to Zero Tackle Hard Knocks, where each week, each team cops a hard knock or a burning question. We are fresh off a crazy magic round, so let's kick it off with, is Jock Madden the future? You'd swear it was actually Adam Reynolds who stepped up and iced Brisbane's narrow win over the Sea Eagles on Friday night to kick off Magic Round with a field goal. Madden controlled things nicely in the number seven for Brisbane, showing off some of the potential he has coming through the grades at the Tigers. We all know Reynolds has to retire at some point and Madden could be that next man up. Will Xavier Savage become a winger for good? It's a move that caught a few by surprise during the preseason. Ricky Stewart deciding to move Xavier Savage onto the wing after he couldn't quite find his feet to the extent he locked up the Canberra's fullback jumper. But it's definitely working now. Savage was outstanding again for the Raiders against the Bulldogs and he'll only continue to grow into the role with each passing game. The Bulldogs can't afford to lose Matt Burton to State of Origin. Yeah, we said it. State of Origin might be the biggest time of year in rugby league circles, but it absolutely guts the club competition. The Bulldogs are unlikely to have many players in Origin contention this year, but given injuries and form to key Blues halves options, it's clear Burton is in the mix. But what else is clear is that he's the Bulldogs' best. Canterbury are in the mix for the finals, but I'm not sure they will be at the end of the Origin period if they have to play games without Burton. The Sharks are now the real deal. The expectation was that this was going to be a five-week play for the Sharks to prove themselves as the real deal. Some will be wanting to wait until they challenge themselves against Penrith next week to write home about the men from the Shire, but with a win away from home against Melbourne without Nico Hines and then a high-scoring win over the Roosters, we're ready to write them into the conversation around who wins it all this year. Don't squander a 14-point halftime lead and then blame the referees. It's fair to say Des Hasler wasn't exactly glowing in his assessment of the match officials after Saturday's clash with Newcastle. Seriously, if you haven't listened to Des yet, go and do it. Then try to work out why he wants to blame the referees for an, at worst, 50-50 decision after his side let a 24-10 halftime lead turn into a 28-24 loss with Newcastle missing Kalen Ponga and Tyson Gamble. Pressure, eh? Does funny things to a man. Is it time to consider a positional swap for Ruben Garrick? It would be totally and utterly unfair to suggest Garrick's swap to the centres hasn't worked this season. In the same breath though, he hasn't had the same impact he had on the wing or at fullback for that matter. There's little doubt Tolatau Kula is a star of the future and needs a run at the back, but it doesn't change the nagging doubt that Garrick should be playing somewhere other than the centres. Is Tyron Wishart up to the long-term challenge? Despite the fact the Storm had a big win on Sunday and sit at the pointy end as the halfway point of the season approaches, it's still not all fun and games for Craig Bellamy. Jerome Hughes might be set to return next weekend, but that will immediately see Cameron Munster go out with a groin injury. We don't know how long for yet, but Tyron Wishart is going to have a long stint in the number six jumper, so we're going to find out just how adaptable and ready for life he is as an NRL starter. Could Tyson Frizzell become a full-time middle third player? There was a little bit of a surprise this weekend as former Origin player Tyson Frizzell played through the middle third for the Knights. Adam O'Brien explained post-game that it was down to the way Dylan Lucas and Kai Pierce paul had trained on the edge during the week against what they expected would be a Titans team with plenty of sideways movement. Frizzell was solid in the middle through and as he hits the back end of his career, a slightly switched up role might be the way to go. Food for thought anyway. How far away is Dylan Walker from Origin? Last week in this very video, but talking about the Roosters, we asked a very similar question about Connor Watson. In truth, it's probably a two-up race for that last utility spot between the pair, although some will argue it's actually one jersey between the duo and Cameron McInnes, with the Sharks' workhorse in the lead. Still, Walker was at his absolute best against the Panthers on Sunday and surely has done his chances no harm after being promoted to start at lock. Will Tom Dearden become the halfback? Tom Dearden was, again, arguably the best cowboy in the park in their scrappy win over the horrific Rabbitohs on Saturday during Magic Round. Despite the Cowboys not exactly looking a million bucks any time since Round 3, Dearden has continually stepped up to the plate. He could be a shoe-in for the Queensland number 6 jumper with Cameron Munster injured, but there is a real train of thought that suggests his long-term future will actually be in the number 7. How much pressure is Brad Arthur under? Well, it turns out he was under a lot of pressure. So we filmed this episode of Hard Knocks on Monday morning and then put it up Monday afternoon. And then about five minutes later, Brad Arthur was let go by Parramatta. So all of this part is now irrelevant. If you want to read all the details, check out zerotackle.com. Is Jack Cole ready to replace Jerome Luai next year? 
With Nathan Cleary out of action, we are getting our first proper look for a prolonged period at Jack. The youngster will likely take over Penrith's number six jumper from the Tigers bound Jerome Luai next year and comes as one of the most highly rated juniors in the game. It's safe to say that while the jury is still out on Cole for the moment, he has shown enough to suggest he is going to develop into an excellent player. Can the Rabbitohs avoid the spoon? Maybe we are going the early crow here, but it's tough to see the Bunnies not picking up the dreaded prize at this point in time. Another loss to the Cowboys on Saturday doesn't help matters, of course, but with the Titans looking more competitive and every other side ahead of them to the naked eye, South Sydney might need to pull a rabbit out of the hat to avoid finishing at the bottom with just a single win from nine games to their name at this stage. Also bobbing in here just to say that Wayne Bennett has officially signed on a three-year deal at the Rabbitohs. Rugby League moves very quickly. Uh, if you want to read all about it, go check out zerotackle.com. But uh, yeah, it's not all doom and gloom for the Rabbitohs. They might still win the spoon this year, but uh, you got Wayne Bennett coming next year, so I don't know. The Dragons need an informed Blake Laurie after their bye. The Dragons may have been better than most preseason predictions to start the season, but that doesn't mean it's been an amazing first portion of the campaign. That said, their key disappointment has arguably been the form of Blake Laurie. At one point, he may have been not that far from origin picture last year. Fast forward 12 months and he's lucky to hold on to a first grade spot. The problem is the Dragons need him at his best to be at their best. Some big games coming up after the week off. Is scoring 30 points and losing a major cause for concern? The short answer is yes. You won't score 30 and lose too often. The issue was defense for the Roosters as they leaked a 38 against a red hot Sharks outfit. There really are no issues with the Roosters' attack given they have scored points by the truckload over the last month. They will be hoping the defense is a one-off, but it'll be something to watch closely in the coming weeks because something stunk on Saturday. The Dolphins need a fit hammer to make a September charge. When he's at his best, Hamiso Tabuai Fido is among the most watchable players in the NRL. He's simply so good at the back for the Dolphins. The difference he made to the side in attack was clear to see against the Tigers on Sunday as he returned to action from injury. He will, despite his long layoff, be picked for Queensland next week and is the type of player who must be fit if the Dolphins are going anywhere in September. The Tigers won the Justin Allarm trade. Yeah, yeah. Justin Allarm spent 10 minutes in the sin bin on Sunday night, but the other 70 minutes were excellent for the Tigers' centre. That more or less follows the trend he has set this year, returning to somewhere near the form he once displayed at the Melbourne Storm. It's clear he needed a fresh start. 2023 was a disaster for Olam. 2024 is shaping up as the opposite. And with all due respect to Sean Bloor, who went the other way, the Tigers have won this one. And the last hard knock is for the referees. <sighs> Just a massive, enormous side that this is even a topic of discussion. Another weekend, more controversy. Manly weren't happy, Des Hasler wasn't happy, fans weren't happy. It's just difficult. Bunker officials have absolutely no reason to get anything wrong with approximately 903 camera angles and all the time in the world, yet they still do. We just want consistency from the video officials. It really should not be that hard. Those are our hard knocks and burning questions leading into round 12. Are we right? Are we wrong? Are we asking the right questions? Let us know what you think in the comments. Hit the subscribe button and catch all the latest NRL news at zerotackle.com, the number one NRL independent news source.